you'll be walking and you'll see a jump that calls to you. And that jump is some, it's, it's undifferentiated. You don't net yet know what you can do. And it has promise, right? Like if you do it, it's really cool. It's exciting. But if you fail, you might get hurt. And so you get to play with and recognize what it's like to experience fear at a really deep level. And then you get to go right. through the physical process of how does my body handle this fear? What do I need to, to prepare myself? And then how do I make the commitment and make the jump to the other side? The highest art is to transform an obstacle into an affordance, right? A, this is yes. no longer an obstacle. It's something that I can use to facilitate my pathway forward. That's the highest form of play. The more intense the attack, the more potential there is in making your ability to contend with it manifest. The highest form of mastery is to turn the worst obstacle into the most remarkable affordance. We calibrate a lot of fine actions with opponent processing. Mm -hmm. Almost all of our fine actions are the consequence of two systems in opposition modulating yep. each other. So if you want to move your hand really smoothly, you can do it like this. Mm -hmm. But it's still kind of jerky if you analyze it at the micro level. But if you do this, you can mm. move your hand with incredible precision. And yep. that's an opponent process. And you have that opponent process dynamic within a marriage and you have it within a debate, you have mm -hmm. it within play. It's, it seems to be a universal principle, the principle yeah. of properly balanced opponent processing. And the fundamental connections that a practice has to offer, it has to integrate the self better, right? It has to integrate the self with the physical world better. It has to integrate the self with the things we can manipulate better and with other social beings better. And then with yeah. this concept of the transcendent, all of those are also that's opponent a full process. That's logos integration. Okay, that's, so okay. Yes. why are they all yeah. opponent processing? Because you can, you, can, you can split the self. You can split the self. If you want to think deeply about something, you have to argue with yourself. You have to create two different dialogues in your head. So there's this fundamentally dialogical process. And you can, you can embody that by just creating tension in your body between different systems and feeling how, you know, these two things, the now, now I'm playing that and how I can grow with it. And then you can think about, can my mind control my body better? Or can my body support my mind better, right? And all those things can be in, in dynamic composition. And obviously, once we get to parkour, right, that, that body environment practice, the, the, the environment is the opponent. Right, and I'm learning to have yep, greater yep. and greater mastery, greater and greater affordances available to me through that relationship. And then the same thing when I learn to throw and catch and swing objects, and then obviously do fine crafting things, which are kind of the the, the developmental derivative of those basic play instincts to play with objects. And then obviously when I'm engaged in rough and tumble play, it's opponent processing. And so. Yep. I think fundamentally we need an embodied set of physical practices that allow us to attune our relevance realization across these fundamental relationships in order to act out the metamyth that you described in Maps of Meaning. You can split the self. The highest form of mastery is to turn the worst obstacle into the most remarkable affordance. You can split the self. 